Okay, if the surroundings look a little bit different, it's because I'm currently filming this in Texas, at Texas A&M University. I'm here for a, for a class. Now, <clears throat> I noticed that my Vegeta versus Superman got an awful lot of response, most of which was negative. Some people asked me if I didn't pick Goku. So I'm going to try to explain this throughout this, this, this video. I'll try to keep it brief, but with no timer and no real reference for how long this is taking, because the sun is still out down here in Texas. <clears throat> okay. First off, how come I didn't pick Goku for our Superman? The main reason why is because when you look at those two, they are the exact same character. They're both one of the last surviving members from their planet after it was destroyed. They were both raised essentially on Earth to kind of have those uh, those, those human the human emotions and those basic you know morals. And they also that is what they're fighting for. They're definitely fighting for their new adopted home planet. And they always find a way to win. How come Vegeta didn't become the first Super Saiyan? Why? He was never fighting for anybody. Vegeta fought for Vegeta. That's why he lost a lot of his fights, and that's why he ran from a lot of his fights. If Vegeta knew he couldn't win, that was it. He, he was done. When he fought Frieza, he realized he couldn't do it. He then convinced, hey, you know what? Blow a hole through me. Hey, Dende. If you can revive me, I'll be stronger. Yeah, Saiyans don't get stronger when they fight, they get stronger after they recover from a fight. So that having been said, yeah, if Vegeta were to fight Superman, and Superman were to win the first fight, the second fight is probably going to be closer, and the third fight, you know, if Vegeta hasn't cracked into like Super Saiyan 3, Vegeta's probably going to get closer in the second fight, and will easily take him the third fight, maybe the fight after that. So, if I had to look at this fight in a three round aspect, okay. The first round is going to go to Vegeta. Here's why I pick Vegeta. Vegeta is not going to hold back. Superman does. Superman has held back in almost every single fight he's ever been in. With the exception of like two fights that he wasn't mind controlled. Superman in Apocalypse Now beat the crap out of Darkseid. Darkseid thought he was blind and Superman was like, no, I just punched you to the point that your face is swelled up. Yes, the new god, Darkseid. Yes, while, while fighting for the, the soul of, of uh, Steel, he convinced Darkseid to fight him in essentially an abandoned asteroid field, and he beat the crap out of Darkseid. That's impressive. And it wasn't like he barely beat him. He whooped the crap out of Darkseid. And then the final crisis. After Superman came back from, you know, helping fight against Superboy Prime and essentially a, a whole intergalactic prison versus of villains, he came to Earth and he pretty much tore through all of Darkseid's army after Darkseid had taken over the Earth. I would say those two feats alone are probably vastly superior to what Vegeta has done. Just I'm going to call it like I see it. I mean, Vegeta couldn't defeat Perfect Cell. Vegeta did a pretty good job against regular Happy Boo and was able to help Goku in a fight against Kid Boo. And I'm pretty sure that Darkseid, being a god, being a new god, is probably a step above some of those people. When it came down to, oh man, we need to help defeat the Anti-Monitor. Who, who did they ask for help? Didn't Darkseid channel his you know, Omega Beams through Alexander Luther to help destroy the Anti-Monitor? That when you can use your eye beams and help destroy a creature that essentially is, the, is powered by the Anti-Matter universe, which at that point in time was ridiculously huge. Darkseid is a bad man. Superman has beaten him. Ironically, he's beaten him pretty much twice in cartoons and once in the comics. And then tore through his army. Twice in cartoons, once in the comics. That That is ridiculously impressive. So again, going back to the, the three-round aspect. Vegeta comes out guns blazing. He does a really good job and he probably knocks Superman back on his heels. First round definitely goes to Vegeta. Because Vegeta, if Vegeta can go at a 10, he goes at a 10. Superman begins his fights at like a 7. 
But once he knows, well, this guy can dish out a lot of damage. He can probably take it too. That's when he takes a second round, and he is going to, and he is going to pretty handily, you know, beat Vegeta up close. Vegeta's going to have a skill advantage, but he's taking on a guy who's powered by the sun. So unless Vegeta goes, oh, the sun, Gallic gun, and destroys the sun first, Superman's going to constantly have a, a level of energy constantly feeding into him, as well as a healing factor, as well as superior invulnerability to who he's fighting. So he's going to be able to hit harder, take less damage, and recover throughout the whole fight. And as long as this fight stays in close, it is Superman's fight. Superman might not have a lot of skill, but, but it really doesn't matter. He just needs to connect a couple of times, and Vegeta's going to get hurt. Vegeta's power is entirely internal. Superman has internalized solar energy, and he's constantly being fed more of it by the sun. We've seen Superman get cut and then heal seconds later. So that means as Vegeta is pounding the crap out of Superman, Superman's wounds are going to constantly be healing themselves. So right there you're fighting somebody who doesn't regenerate versus a guy who does regenerate. Why is it so hard to beat Wolverine? Well, you, you punch Wolverine and he starts healing from that first punch. You hit him seven or eight times. By the time that eighth punch has hit him, he's trying to recover from the first two, maybe three, maybe even four. So Vegeta, over time, since his energy is used both offensively and defensively, he's going to begin to wear himself out. Superman, really not so much. And as Superman has to turn up a notch, he's beaten a god. When they resurrected Doomsday during the anniversary of Superman Doomsday, he one-punched and knocked out Doomsday. He's knocked out Thor in one punch. He's knocked out Wonder Man in one punch. So he, he does have the ability to defeat opponents of relatively equal caliber in one punch. He's also survived a couple centuries of being tortured by Gog. So you, got, so you have somebody who's got a ridiculous amount of resolve versus a guy where if he doesn't think he can win, he's really only got two options. One, run. Because he knows if he can run and recover, he'll come back stronger. Two, like when he fought Boo, just blow himself up. So here's how I picture. I picture the first round, Vegeta. Second round, Superman. Third round, you know, Vegeta's getting tired. Superman by this time is probably taking a decent beating too. I picture Vegeta probably getting upper hand. Slightly towards the end, like, you know, they're the third round of this one solid encounter. There's no downtime between these three rounds. It's not like, oh, okay, they fought, then Vegeta went ahead of Sensu Bean and then came back. Because no, they're going to come back stronger. Same with, it's not like, okay, Vegeta can take a Sensu Bean, Superman goes and sun dips. You know, Superman floats around the sun for a little while, fully regenerates and comes back. No. It's going to be the distance fight, the in close fight. And then the second half of their in-close fight. I picture Vegeta getting upper hand for a little while, looking at Superman going, why don't you fall? Why don't you quit? Why do you keep fighting? With Superman probably looking at him going, I don't know how to quit. There is zero quit in me. And Vegeta probably getting that, no matter what I do, he keeps on coming. So he's going to want two things. One, He's going to try to blow himself up. And if that's safe for him probably to, to summon the energy to do that, Superman could probably grab him and fly him into space. The last time I checked, Superman can breathe in space for a little while, Vegeta can't. Or, Vegeta's going to look at him and try to run. And if Superman knows at this point that Vegeta is a strong enough threat, he's not going to let him run. He's going to chase him down. He chased down Doomsday when Doomsday was a huge threat. Regardless of how beat Superman gets, Superman will fight Vegeta till he dies. Vegeta is not really a fan of dying. You know, why did Vegeta blow up when he took on Boo? Because he wanted to save his son. That was it. Do, do I picture if he's fighting Superman that he's thinking, I'm going to save my son? No, 
because he's probably going to go, you know, this guy's kind of like fighting Goku. He's not going to kill my son. He's not going to kill my family. He's just the guy I can't beat. And that's why I picked Vegeta and not Goku. Goku always had that ability to go to that next step, that next level. If Goku was fighting a 9 and his opponent was a 10, Goku would hit 10. If he couldn't beat him at 10, he could edge on that slight bit more and hit like an 11. Superman, same thing. Superman ceiling, you think he's here. No, that's just where he stops at. He can go up to here. He's torn through so many people when he's had absolutely no option. Best analogy. Superman is Goku. Vegeta is General Zod. General Zod, fantastic training, great military tactician, same abilities as Superman. Then why does Superman beat him? He might not beat him every single time right off the bat. Why does Superman always beat him? If, if their abilities are the same, but one has a better level of training. Why? Because that's what Superman does. Against somebody like Vegeta, you know, Vegeta takes the first strike, he's that opening attack. Superman is going to know from that point on, he doesn't need to hold back. He doesn't need to walk around you know, in, in a world made of cardboard and eggshells. He knows he's going to be able to bring everything he's got against Vegeta. And everything Superman can bring is more than Vegeta can handle. Now Vegeta is a fantastic fighter, but a super motivated Superman is ridiculous. In Final Crisis, when it came time to defeat the, the Dark Monitor, the greatest threat to the multiverse ever, who did they get? They got an army of Supermen. Why, why did they get an army of Supermen? Because they know that the strongest person in every single universe is Superman. Taking nothing away from Vegeta. However, Vegeta, the Dragon Ball Z universe, is always the number two. He's always the number two. He's almost never number one. Why? Goku is. Goku always surpasses him. And Goku is almost identical to what Superman is. Regardless of how close you think you are to Superman, Superman can always take it that one step farther. Because he has that undeniable hope for the future, and he will fight for it. He will put his life on the line, and he will die. And he will put it all on the table to defeat an opponent. Vegeta, if he's fighting for his family, will probably go that far. Probably. If he if he knows he's not going to lose his family in the process, he's gonna he's gonna fight just below that ability to die. And that small distance between, you know, your max capacity and where you want to stop at, Superman will blast right through that. And that's why he beats Vegeta. And fight between Superman and Goku, those two guys are gonna it's gonna start out slow. And it's gonna happen, they're gonna keep on fighting and fighting and fighting until they go, hmm. I, I think we're pretty evenly matched. And they'll probably go, Yeah. I think our fighting caused an earthquake. Okay, I'll save the people, you stop the earthquake. I don't picture those two guys going through a fight and not stopping to save everyone around them. In a fight between Vegeta and Superman, yeah. If the people start, start being, start getting threatened, you know what, Superman's gonna go, okay, you know what, I'd beat this guy faster. And he's probably gonna take Vegeta to a spot where he can, he can let loose and he can easily defeat him. So that's why Superman beats Vegeta. It's not because Vegeta's not a phenomenal fighter. It's not because Vegeta isn't going to push Superman as far as he can. It's because Vegeta's going to push Superman to that level that Superman is going to finally go, you know, I've got no option. I've got to turn it all on. And that's it. A fully motivated Superman is next to unstoppable. Period. 